two, one, welcome in. So in this video, I just wanna be able to go over fluids. So what is a fluid in physics? When we think of fluids in everyday life, we pretty much just think of a liquid, right? So we don't distinguish between anything else and um, you're not incorrect, okay? So liquid is definitely a fluid. It's also fluid in physics, but there is also another state uh, which we consider, or at least um, two other items, okay, that we consider to be fluids. So before I jump in and kind of uh, fully out go over uh, what constitutes with regards to a fluid, like what is that key little characteristic, I wanna be able to kind of go over and do a little bit of a deja vu for you on kind of the different states, which you know you have certainly covered um, if you've gotten yourself up to this point in uh, physics, but it doesn't hurt kind of to go back because it will let us know kind of the distinguishing feature, okay, what is a fluid, okay, and then what is not. So if we go back to solids, right, so if I go back to solids, we can think of solids as anything that hold their uh, form. Now, when we say, you know, we want to be able to hold a form in a solid, then what we're referring to is that, you know, if you have some kind of a structure, so it looks sometimes uh, drawn like this, okay, where it's almost like a lattice, and then you have these connections in between, so these are um, kind of atoms, okay, within there that we are carrying out, and, you know, we have these connections, which basically are forces that are holding these things in place. Now, when we say that uh, it holds a form, what we're referring to is the fact that these particular atoms are going to have pretty much the same neighbors, right, as they stick around. And although these technical forces, these lines that we draw here, they don't really exist there. Uh, it is just a matter of, uh, in our memory, to think back of, you know, what we can think of as solids. But these items, see, these items are very close together. So the, these um, atoms and particles are close together. And, you know, they can certainly vibrate and so on, as you have seen in thermal energy when you were uh, talking about that. So they can go back and forth, but they can't really kind of roll over each other, right? And then, you know, switch their neighbors more and more. So they have a fixed particular structure. So we say that they hold their form. Now, <clears throat> If we go into these, you know, atoms and molecules, um, what makes this uh, a solid and one of the key features, okay, why solids are not fluids, um, because of the fact that the atoms and molecules um, do not really roll or, or slide over each other. So they hold this lattice form and they can certainly vibrate, you know, that you might be able to kind of compress them a very, very tiny amount, if at all. Okay, or you might stretch them very little tiny amount, but that stretching and compression is more if you're gonna be adding more and more energy, so the kind of thermal energy into okay, the actual bonds, okay, and then the kinetic energy which happens within these atoms and molecules. So you know they can start vibrating just a little bit more, but they won't be able to roll over each other and kind of pass through each other and then roll again and just go, go on. So that's one of the key features that we have as we are pointing out what makes a fluid. So if it cannot roll, so if they do not roll, okay, or slide over each other, then it's not a fluid. So solids are not fluids. Um, and the fact is that those neighboring atoms and molecules are basically in very close contact. Now, the last item here is that I wanted to point out to you is that they don't really stretch or compress as much. So as I said, they can really just start to vibrate more and more depending on how much energy you give or how much energy you're gonna take away. Now, with regards to liquids, so if I kind of jump over okay, into liquids, as you can see there, well, liquids are a little bit different. So what makes it a, a liquid? Well, first of all, they can deform easily, right? So they do not hold their form. So unlike a solid, which, it, which has a particular structure, Okay, and then those neighbors okay, that they have are fixed to them because of the forces that are intertwined in there. So they don't allow them to kind of roll. Okay, well, in liquids, you know, we do start coming in okay, to this idea 
that they can actually roll roll or slide over each other. So, you know, I kind of depicted here in the picture right there. So here as you have it. So you have, you know, and you can imagine that these are either atoms or maybe they're even molecules. So like H2O, which is going to kind of be made up something like that, right? So that could be this one item. So that particular particle that you have, okay, is not going to be fixed in its shape. It can actually roll. So as you know, if you can have a glass you put in, let's say, water or any liquid into it, okay, it's going to just take the shape of the actual glass itself or any of the container. And then you can certainly, you know, it can swirl it around and you can see that it's going to start to move around. That's not going to happen with the solid. The solid, if you would shake it around, the whole solid would just as a whole, as a lattice move. But here, if you shake up the actual liquid inside of the glass, then what's happening is those particles are rolling over each other. They're sliding over each other, but they still have enough um, energy and forces that are still keeping it together. It's not like that they start to escape, right? Um, you wouldn't see them escape the actual glass. So they do have enough kind of forces in between and energy to kill, keep them intact. So those would be the potential energy that they actually are carrying throughout. So these molecules okay, are kind of still hold uh, or held together, but they can flow. And that is important to know. So that's that idea of flow. And when something can flow, so when those molecules or particles or atoms are allowed to flow over each other, and you can see that flow as you're going through, well, that actually constitutes a fluid. So that is a fluid. Now, you're not surprised because I'm sure that you thought of fluids as liquids. So you, you know, you would think that, okay, well, that makes sense. And you know what I was thinking before. So that is true. Now, one other last item is that within these liquids, they can't really be compressed, right? So they do resist compression uh, because of the fact that they do have strong enough forces okay, to kind of keep away that com particular compression. So they can't really be easily compressed, okay? Meaning kind of shrunk in, Okay, into space. Now, the last one, okay, which kind of constitutes two, so gases, or sometimes you also have plasmas. But, okay, so I'll just touch base on plasmas at the end. Let's first, you know, go in into these gases. So for gases, you know, so what we have, so here's kind of the first two items, okay, that I have in here. So atoms, okay, are very far apart in comparison to their size, right? And the actual forces, okay, are extremely weak, okay, um, between those atoms. So they have enough energy, okay, so as you kind of think back, they've already escaped, right? So they had enough en energy that they're in gas, in, in a gas state. And these particles are really just moving around all over the place. There's nothing really holding them in a lattice, right? And there's no energy that is holding them together. They have enough energy where the potential energies between those actual kind of molecules have been broken down and they started to escape and they're moving around all over the place. And they're so far apart from each other that okay, they can actually keep shifting. And because of the fact that they can keep shifting and they can keep kind of moving along, we may not think of them as rolling or sliding over each other because they might seem so far, but that's exactly what's happening. In a gas, they're going to be moving and they're gonna be rolling and sliding and they kind of just are shifting all over. So that brings up, okay, the kind of uh, idea that they do flow very easily. And because they do flow, right? So if you can take a gas and you can allow those particles to actually flow over each other, then we do consider in physics that to be a fluid. So gases are actually a fluid. Um, and so are liquids. So those are the two. Solids are not because they keep their actual lattice form. So here, okay, another kind of two items to kind of think about. So they can be compressed due to the big space between, okay? So you have a huge amount of space in between the actual molecules or particles. They're so far apart that you can bring them together, right? So for example, you know, you can take this one and this one, you know, you can start bringing them together because they're really, really far apart. Now, the way that I have drawn it, you know, it might seem that they're not really that far apart, but it's far apart enough, okay, in comparison to their size. 
And because they have so much energy and no more of that potential energy, which keeps them kind of intact, they can escape any container that you put them in as long as it's open and it doesn't have any holes. If it's closed in, then obviously the container itself okay, um, has enough energy because that container is going to be solid and that particular solid is gonna keep its form. So although those gases inside might be hitting the walls, but if it's closed in, they'll never get a chance to escape. But as soon as you open it, then the actual particle, it would, which is gonna be traveling towards that exit, there's nothing to stop it. So therefore it leaves and eventually, if, if another one just keeps hitting and hitting okay, the actual container walls, well, eventually it's going to hit enough that it's going to also escape. And then slowly they all try to escape. Now, there is one other item which basically acts exactly like a gas. So it's exactly the same. And we call it a plasma. Now, you don't really study plasma right off the bat within physics, especially not if you're kind of in grade 11 or introductory physics per se, but you should be aware that there is something called a plasma, okay, which acts like a gas, so it has kind of everything what I've just listed, but it is made up of charged particles. And when you do get to the topics of charged particles of electrons and protons and ions, so maybe you might remember that from your sciences or chemistry before you walked into physics, but if they are charged, okay, then we kind of consider them as plasma. I don't want to say anything more because for the purpose of this video, which I wanted to just to say, what is a fluid? Well, if a plasma acts like a gas in terms of it's kind of uh, moving around and rolling and, and so on, then plasma is also considered a fluid. So if you get down the line and you study ever and someone says plasma, don't forget that it is a fluid. But primarily the fluids you will be discussing Okay, especially in the beginning, are actually going to be kind of of liquid form. And if it's necessary, you know, your teachers are going to point out to you if they're referring to maybe gases. But a fluid, in short, a liquid, a gas, or a plasma. Solid, nope, cannot be. All right, so thanks for watching. We'll see you in a future video. Bye, everybody.